Good morning. Welcome to Planet Mojo. This morning, I'm going to give you a quick update on all the seedlings in the greenhouse. And then we'll take a look at the stuff I've seeded here. And then we'll finally walk down the ditch and I'll show you where I burned in the prairie garden. I've been using this front area of the greenhouse to store stuff because it's a lot easier than going all the way across to the shed to get stuff. Hopefully that's going to be solved real soon. We may be building our shop building right here this summer, but that still remains to be seen. Let's take a look at what we got here. As per usual, I get really mixed results with seedlings when I do prairie grasses like this. This is a purchased item. I'll show you that in a little bit. Pretty cool, eh? This flat right here is sand drop seed. And up until a few days ago, they were all doing perfect. And then these two died overnight. And I think it was due to the cold. We've had some really bizarre weather. It's gotten below freezing a couple nights. And I had the mats on, but still a few plants died. This is the split beard blue stem, or at least I think it is. That's what was planted in these and a ton of stuff came up. So it can't all be weeds. But it really doesn't look like, oh, there it is. There's the blue stem. I was looking for a blue stem. Why would it be called blue stem if it doesn't have a blue stem? And a lot of these, or pretty much every one I've looked at, does not have a blue stem. So I guess that's good. These are going to get transplanted within a day or two. They're way too big already, but I just haven't had time to get in here and transplant them. These need transplanting as well. This is a weed. Uh, we, we won't mess with that right now. Um, this looks to be a failure. And this happened last time I planted June grass as well. I think the peat is just too rich for it. June grass grows in very poor soil. And I think next time I try to pot it, I'm gonna grow it in straight sand. I'll bet it grows real good in that. Here we have foul manna grass. And you can see it's growing on both ends. And that's probably because everything's on a slight angle here. And I rotate these every once in a while, and the water goes down to the ends. This is a plant that loves water, so that's probably why it's growing on the ends. I probably didn't have enough water in it. This is foul manna grass as well. That's going to be plenty of plants for what I'm using it for. And basically, when I grow stuff in the greenhouse like this, I'm looking to have specimens that I know exactly what it is so I can identify it in the wild. Once this stuff grows up, I'll plant it in known locations in the gardens here, and then I can observe it growing in all the different stages and be able to identify it in the coming years. I have the cuttings in the house. The freezing weather was really messing with them, and I believe it killed some of them. But I'll show those when I do the repotting in a couple days. This right here is this is blue stem as well. This is a, a special variety of little blue stem that has like a steel color to it. I forget what the name of it is. Let me see if it's on there. Twilight Zone. So this is Little Blue Stem. It was just selected because it had a really interesting color. 
So I'm going to add these to my gardens to give it color. I still have six more to come, and I'll show you those when they get here. The six that are coming are all switchgrass, three of each. And those are pretty interesting as well. They're still 100% native prairie grasses, but their extra color are going to add a real nice splash in the prairie gardens and in the prairie itself. Okay, let's get outside and take a look at the other stuff. This is where I reseeded just a couple weeks ago. You can still see there's a bunch of seeds there, but there is also a whole bunch of grass growing. So that's doing well. We haven't had pretty much any rain. We had tiny little splashes of rain. So as soon as it rains, this is all going to take off big time. And the stuff over here on this side, same thing. Got a whole bunch of seeds still there, the stuff the birds left. But this area is likely to be dozed in a little while. So if we don't build the building, I definitely need grass growing here. But if we do build the building, all of this earth is going to be going back there. And it's going to be the back of the building and the road going up to the main road there. All right, let's take a look in the ditches and work our way to the prairie garden. There is absolutely nothing with the purple love grass, which is growing all along right there. So we'll start on this side. This again is the lilies that we planted when we first moved here. And every year I keep saying I'm going to take those out of here and plant some native stuff there, but I never do it. This is the June grass. June grass actually loves to grow in a sandy, gravelly area. And if you put it in fertile soil, that'll kill it. So that's probably why the seedlings are dying. Next year, I'm going to plant it in some kind of nasty stuff. I tried killing the majority of the weeds in here, but it looks like some of them made it through. I'm going to have to get back in here for one quick spray, like this stuff right here. That needs to be sprayed. This is all of the cool season grasses. These are all, I think they're all Canada rye. There might be silky rye in here. I'm a little bit confused on what got planted here, but those are moving along really well. This is the prairie drop seed that I've had so much problems getting to grow. This will be its second year, and that takes up to five years to hit its full stride. So after three years, it's going to look gorgeous, but this is only its second year. It's going to look nice, but not as nice as it will in a few years. Here's another one, and I will be killing this right here. That's why the red stakes are here. In the middle of the summer, this just gets way too massive and these fall over and kill everything else around them. So we got plenty of purple cone flower, which is what that is. There's purple cone flower throughout here. When I removed the gardens from the side of the hill there, I put all the purple cone flower in here which was a mistake because it's pretty invasive and there was already a bunch of purple cone flower here. So now it's time to remove some of it. More prairie drop seed and back here. I'll leave these marked with these little tags. Probably, this will probably be the last year. You'll be able to see where they are in future years, like right here. This is a little blue stem, and you can, you can see where the plant is after a burn. And it's starting to come up right there. Hopefully I didn't kill any of these. You're supposed to wait three years before you burn, and I believe those are two years old. It shouldn't have killed them, though. They have incredibly deep root systems. More of the prairie drop seed, lupine. Lupine is not a native plant, but my wife likes it. Yeah, all of this drop seed 
is doing really well some better than others but that's to be expected yeah I definitely got to get in here and do a little bit of killing a lot of weeds came back yeah you can see the greenness in these just little hints of green that'll be a four foot tall plant in no time I think a horse did this. You can see there's a couple of them. Either that or it's a collapsed mole tunnel. Prairie drop seed, prairie drop seed. When these get full grown, they'll be about two foot diameter. So there'll be mounds that go right into each other right here. We may see a little bit of that this year, but we definitely will next year. And you can see all this stuff is died back. This was all sprayed a couple weeks ago. But I got to get in here and spray this wild carrot. That stuff is incredibly invasive. Signs of life after the burn. This is purple lovegrass right here and none of it's up yet this is one of the later grasses to make an appearance in the summer you know as you could see the little blue stem and big blue stem are already starting to show purple love grass here as well i gotta get in here and spray this hopefully i can get this done today this is gravel from the winter our idiot road guy just went hog wild this last winter and really filled the ditches and the lawns all with gravel but it looks like that's gonna make it I think I'm gonna get in here and give this stuff a little bit of nitrogen a little bit of a drink and Give it some strength to revive itself yeah there's one there as well and you can see the little spikes coming up on the blue stem we had onions growing here i don't know it's probably three years ago and this is a remnant of that this little blue stem is much further along I'm not a hundred percent sure what this one is here it's not a grass though like I keep saying I'm gonna have to get back out here and kill this stuff back all of this stuff needs to be dead otherwise when I plant the wildflowers in here it'll just be a big mix of weeds and wildflowers you got to kill back all the weeds a couple times and then this will get planted in about two weeks little over two weeks so yeah I should spray this today and this area right here this is my prairie drop seed mass planting there's one here one here two over there one two three four five six there's just a ton of them here and with the spacing they're at it's just gonna look like mounds at some point this is going to be a really cool area. I got to kill that weed though, those weeds as well. That right there is hollyhock. I got to kill that as well. I had a huge hollyhock problem last year. Just hollyhocks growing everywhere in the garden. And I can't have that again this year. Again, prairie drop seed some dramatically better than others like that one compared to that one that one looks pretty nice back there as well yeah this garden is getting closer and closer to naturalization every year at some point this entire back part will not need any more plants and I'll just be planting the annual wildflowers every year along the ditch here 
Yeah, this is what I was dealing with last year. Definitely don't want that growing right there. Yeah, this whole area right here. Yeah, you can see. I'm not doing much good just pulling the leaves off, but I'll get in here and kill it. Little blue stem. That hollyhock can really get away from you if you let it. And unfortunately, I let it. And again, these red stakes, that stuff's getting killed. Then I have this arc of prairie drop seed. That's gonna look really cool once these all fill in. Hopefully that'll be this year. And then this is side oats grandma, and that will arc over the top of it. All native and really cool. This right here is all side oats grandma as well along the road. And let's see how this is doing over here. These are the cool season grasses, the rye. And I believe this is all Canada rye. I don't know if I'm gonna leave this in here or not. We'll see. And I tried growing three prairie drop seeds here. And it looks like maybe one of them made it. That one looks pretty sickly. That one doesn't look alive, but we'll see. Yeah, very mixed results with the prairie drop seed. That one looks fine. That one looks like it died. That one looks awesome. So do those two. The ground is better as you go up the hill, so that may have something to do with it. And again, I got to get in here real soon and spot kill some of these weeds. This stuff, I don't know what it is, if it's foxtail, but it really doesn't belong right there. Tater, tater. This area over the top of the hill and going down to the T post down there, this is kind of a mixed bag. Some of it is prairie grass, like that burned stuff right there. But a lot of this stuff that's green already, I really don't know what it is. So at some point this summer, I'm gonna have to identify, like if this is Canada rye, I'll have to flag that and then just kill everything around it. I need room to put, I have the split beard blue stem and a bunch of actual native grasses that gotta go in here. This right here is little blue stem. I got big blue stem over there. Just kind of a mixed bag. In just a couple weeks, I'm gonna be planting samples of all the stuff that's in the greenhouse. I'll be planting that throughout here where I can identify it. And then the rest of that stuff is going into the prairies. Should be pretty cool. All right, enough of this stuff. I gotta get back to work. So if you wanna see the progress with the ditch garden and the prairie gardens, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.